Um, so you can see this is not just like some fancy, oh, okay, that's a nice thing, we're not in triangles anymore. It's actually the whole way we get this graph. Because I like, just think about down here, not even, yeah, no, think about down here, right? Do you see these angles? What are these angles, by the way? You pass from, um, what's this one? 180 degrees, all the way up to? We should put those on. Um, those angles can't exist in triangles, right? But they can exist in circles. That's where we get them from. Okay, so let's go ahead and put those on. 180 degrees, and you also told me 360. What are those in radians? Pi. The middle one's pi, and then the last one is 2 pi. Very good. Uh, there's one point missing. With, it's sort of like we've sort of skipped over it just in the middle there. What's the missing value for x anyway? It's 270 degrees or 3 pi on 2. Very good. And what's its corresponding y value? It'll be negative 1. You can see it down the bottom. And as Mrs. Lee's pointed out, if we came back to our unit circle, right? Sine is the y coordinate. So here I am starting on the positive x axis. Let's go around 90 degrees, 180 degrees. Here's 270. And what's the y coordinate? There's my negative 1. OK. So let's go ahead and put that on. OK. Are you happy? with that. Important things to note, um, this shape here that you can see, this sort of archway looking thing, it's not a semicircle, it's not a semicircle like this, that's not a sine curve, um, and it's also gentle and curved, it's not pointy and, and, and sharp like that. Um, these are sort of caricatures of, like no one's graph is going to look quite exactly this bad, but people get close to that, and um, it's, make, it's really important to make sure we don't do those very common errors. Okay, this first one, we should label it is uh, y equals sine x. And we have drawn it in a certain set of x values. What do we call that, by the way? Certain set of x values. We didn't draw it forever. We restricted it. What's that called? The set of x values. Starts with a d. It's the domain, right? What's the domain for this? How far have we drawn it? One. From domains about x values, right? Horizontally. So this is starting from? Zero. zero all the way up to? 360. Or we could have said to 2 pi. Okay, in fact, I'm going to write both of them. 0 degrees to 360. This, of course, is a pretty standard domain to graph in, but you won't always graph it like that. In fact, when you... That's not a degree, so... When you get to the exercise shortly, one of the main things that they point out is, hey, can you also draw these elsewhere? Can you draw them from negative pi to pi? That's a very common one. Or from negative 2 pi all the way to 2 pi, so it's a copy of that. This is the essence of what we're going to get everything out of. Can I get you from sine to start drawing cosine without my or Mrs. Lisa's help? Maybe some of you have already started drawing that, which is great. But the rest of you, have a go. Make sure it's the same size. Put on these same kinds of features. You don't have to label everything that we did before, but I want to make sure I know where everything is. If you think you're super advanced, and um, Mrs. Lisa and I have given you a thumbs up, go on to tan as well. That would be great. Looking around, things are mostly looking good with a few bits of fine tuning. I was about to do the one for cos and then just talk to you through it, but then I thought, no, actually, what might help a lot of you is just to see the way in which I construct it because that's half of the job, right? Um, the sine graph, um, <laughs> we're saying to these guys before, um, it's both an achievement that I'm proud of and not proud of, that I've literally drawn hundreds of thousands of these over my life. So I'm pretty good at just eyeballing that. One of the things which I notice a lot of people have struggled to do, especially if you try to do this, is pick up a ruler and then have a look at the diff distance, for example, from on your, um, on your page, from 0 to 180 and then from 180 to 360. Now, because I'm so... Um, unashamedly brilliant at graphing. Mine's literally bang on 20 centimeters each time. That's actually, that's actually mostly luck. Um, the, next, the next 10 graphs I do will not be that good. Um, but I know for a fact I'm not as good at doing that as I am at doing the cosine graph. I just I haven't done it as often, right? So when I do the cosine graph, please look closely, right? And I'll show you the order in which I did this. Firstly, you know how I went 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, and we did it in radians as well. I mark out these for the cosine graph and for the tan graph because I know they're always going to be important. And I also know where they're supposed to be. So they're very helpful kind of anchors for me. When I then have a look further, once I've got those horizontal, pi on 2, pi, 3 pi on 2, 2 pi, once I've got them in, I then say, what's the cosine graph supposed to do? Why is it called cosine? Can anyone tell me? 
What's the co the co is also an abbreviation. I don't know what it abbreviates. Ashani? Is it a complement? Yeah, very good. So the co here is short for complement, complement with an e, not complement with an i, not like nice answer, Ashani, um, even though it was a nice answer. This is um, adds up to 90 degrees, right? That's what a complement is. And so the effect on the graph is that you <laughs> shift over the sine graph 90 degrees, or pi on 2. Okay? So instead of starting here, I start 90 degrees forward. Okay? So I'm starting up here. That's why I put a mark in there. And I'm going to go down, and then I'm going to reach this bottom part. I guess you could call it the um, bottom of the valley. I'm going to reach it earlier than I reached it before. Instead of 270, I'm going to meet it 90 degrees earlier at 180. That's why my spot is there, and that's why this spot is here. Okay? Many of you we're seeing are drawing with pen. It's not a bad idea to eventually draw in pen. It does come up easier to read, scanning, all the rest in the HSC. But I can't recommend strongly enough that you draw your first graph in pencil, in something you can erase. Okay? Oh, by the way, I didn't know this before. Who's got an erasable pen? Does anyone have any of those? No, I have them for a long time. Okay, all right, that's fine. Um, I didn't know this before, but I'm just going to put a word of warning out there because some of you are like, I know how to do pen, but also have it erasable. Um, didn't realize this before, but those erasable pen ink things, they're not as durable as normal pens, which shouldn't surprise us because they're erasable after all. But I've heard stories of people who've le left their book in the car, it's been hot, and they come back and it's like, what happened to all my ink? And it's just gone, and other things. So just be watchful. Now I know my points, okay? So now I'm gonna do one more thing, and if you want, haven't done your cosine, right? I've put in these three horizontal lines. Can anyone tell me why I've done that? Three horizontal lines. There are two reasons. Number one, say it again, Will. Yep. Okay, I, I know I'm supposed to get stationary points there. And secondly, it's to avoid me doing this to myself. See this? Often you're kind of like drawing to a point you know you're supposed to get there, and then you're like, oh shoot, I'm like too close, and then it ends up pointy, okay? So now that I've got these horizontal spots, I can quite easily in one line connect that, like so, and then I can do the other one in much the same way. And now I'm pretty happy with that. Right? Um, so did you notice the way I did it, by the way? I did this half, and then I did the other one. And your hand will find one way easier to do than the other, so do whichever. Okay. I'll put the labeling on that afterwards, but let's quickly have a look at the tan one together. What's the definition for tan? What is tan actually equal to? Because like everything else, it's an abbreviation. I'll give you a clue. It's an abbreviation of a, a ratio. It's sine over cos, isn't it? Very good. Sine over cos. Now, we've got the sine and the cos graphs right here. And hopefully you've drawn them like somewhat vertically on each other like I have. Okay? Now what that means is, have a look here. See this denominator, cos x, right? When we thought about domain earlier in the year, we remembered that, I hope. When you're looking at a function which has a fraction in it, like this, okay? Your denominator is not ever allowed to be zero. Why not? Because then you divide by zero and the universe explodes, right? Now, cos x, look closely. When is cos x equal to zero? You can tell me the values now. I haven't labeled them. Hopefully you've labeled them. Here's cos x. Here's one. Here's negative one. At what point along the graph does the cos x hit zero? 90 and 270. Can you tell me them in radians as well? Pi on two? And 3 pi on 2. I'm going to keep pushing on you because you've got to get more used to doing this in radians. Okay, 